is actually here. Get in. This is going up. So we are finally here at Aura's Ogyabyte's VIP meeting room, but we're gonna go inside and check out some new stuff from Gearbyte Aura's this year. So let's get cracking. This Computex coverage is brought to you by Aorus. So team up and fight on. Aorus has some really interesting things to show us today. And the first one is their tactical monitors, which feature gameplay and visual enhancements that are directly integrated into the firmware of these new monitors. These features include number one, Aim Stabilizer, which is just a fancier name for motion blur reduction. And Aura says that this should help you with camera shake in game for things such as weapon recoil. This is nothing new and has been shipping with most gaming monitors these days, and you can't use it to get a refreezing. Number two, we have the OSD Sidekick, which allows you to customize all the settings on your monitors via hotkeys on your keyboard or mouse, so you don't have to fiddle around with the awkward nipple under your monitor. Or it says that it will be providing firmware updates, so you can look forward to getting more features added in the future. Thirdly, we have Active Noise Cancelling or ANC. Now, it doesn't work like you would expect it to. What it does is that it collects a sample of your environmental noise and it uses that to clean up your audio when you speak into your microphone so that your teammates can hear you loud and clear. Number four, we have the new Black Equalizer 2.0, which allows you to tweak the brightness and contrast of darker areas on the screen so you can see better. Now, I've had bad experiences with the previous version of the black equalizer because what I noticed is when you tweak that, all it does is wash out the entire screen and it seems to be some sort of gamma adjustment. And from what I can see, this new version seems to work quite a bit better than the previous one. But that could just be how Aorus sets up their monitors, so I can't be certain until I get one to be tested in the studio. Number 5, we have Game Assist, which includes quite a few things. The first one being a customizable crosshair. You can either draw something or upload a picture of your boss or ex-girlfriend. We also have an on-screen timer that you can use to keep track of your enemies cooldown or even whatever skills they've used, that kind of stuff. On top of that, we have display alignment, which should help you line up all your monitors for the most optimal viewing experience. Number six, and finally, we have picture in picture or PIP or picture by picture, which is PBP. And this allows you to view different video sources at the same time. What this means is that you can be watching tutorials or walkthroughs while playing games or you can even Netflix and chill while working. Horus has presented to us four different gaming monitors. The first one is the AD27QD, a 27-inch 1440p, 10-bit or 8-bit plus FRC IPS panel with an impressive 95% DCI-P3 color accuracy, 144Hz refresh rate, 1MS MPRT and not GTG, 400 nits of brightness for the HDR400 rating, and FreeSync and G-Sync support. The second model is the KD25F, a 24.5-inch 1080p 8-bit TN panel with a 100% sRGB coverage, 240Hz refresh rate, 0.5ms MPRT, and also FreeSync and G-Sync support. I was quite surprised to find that this is a TN panel because it has quite good viewing angles. The final two models are the CV27F and CV27Q. Both these monitors are 27-inch 1500R curved monitors with an 8-bit VA panel, 90% DCI-P3 color accuracy, 165Hz refresh rate, 1MS MPRT, and rated for HDR400. The only differences are that the F version is a 1080p monitor without FreeSync or G-Sync, and the Q version is a 1440p monitor with FreeSync 2 HDR and G-Sync. Next, we also saw this very mysterious looking AIO cooler with an OLED on the pump and this looks oddly familiar. I wonder where I've seen that one before. Moving on to something next level. This Computex also showed us the Aorus NVMe Gen 4 SSD, where Gearbyte has partnered up with Fison to develop their next generation SSD. This is a PCIe 4.0 based NVMe M.2 SSD in three capacities. 
500GB, 1TB, and 2TB. It features a full-body copper heatsink and read speeds up to 5000MB per second and write speeds up to 4400MB per second. As if that wasn't enough, Aorus has blown it out of the water with their Aorus AIC Gen 4 SSD. This is essentially Aorus's mine is faster than yours show off at in-card in a RAID 0 configuration. It has a maximum capacity of 8 terabytes, read and write speeds beyond 15 gigabytes per second, and features a full PCIe 4.0x16 interface. Now something like this is bound to get hot, so Aorus has included an active cooling solution in the form of a cooling fan and heatsink on the front and a metal back plate. Speaking of PCIe 4.0, this actually came with AMD's much anticipated launch of their third generation Ryzen processors, which also prompted Aorus to release their X570 motherboards. There are actually seven motherboards in the lineup. The most significant ones are the X570 Aorus Extreme with a 16-phase VRM all Infineon digital power design with quite an impressive thermal management system with aluminum shrouds covering most of the board itself and active fan cooling. It also has dual 8-pin power connectors. And the next one is the very adorable X570 the iOS Pro Wi-Fi, which is obviously a mini ITX motherboard with two DDR4 DIMMs in a dual-channel configuration, four SATA connectors, and two M.2 slots. The other five are the X570 Aorus Ultra, X570 Aorus Elite, X570 Aorus Pro, the X570 Aorus Master, and the X570 Gaming X. All these motherboards support 3rd gen Ryzen processors with DDR4 RAM support up to 3200 MHz and backwards compatibility with 2nd gen Ryzen processors including the APUs with the Vega graphics and DDR4 RAM support up to 2933 MHz in a dual channel configuration. If you guys would like to find out more about these motherboards, please leave a comment down below. To help gamers obtain every advantage possible, Aorus is certainly stepping up their networking game. This entire X570 Aorus line lineup offers Intel Gigabit Ethernet LAN, while the X570 Aorus Master and X570 Aorus Extreme get 2.5 gigabits and 10 gigabits per second LAN connection speeds respectively. On top of that, all Wi-Fi models in this lineup will feature ultra-fast connectivity at 2.4 gigabits per second with the Wi-Fi 6 802.11ax wireless standard. Of course, we'll still get the usual Aorus features such as RGB Fusion LED lighting and Smart Fan which is there to manage the fan noise from motherboards with active cooling fans so we won't have to deal with tiny whiny fans. Not like you guys of course. And that's all from Aorus this year. If you thought this video was awesome, please give us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below to let us know which are you most excited about. Is it the tactical monitors, the PCIe 4.0 SSDs, or what we're most excited about, the X570 motherboards. Don't forget to subscribe, share, like, whatever you want to do, and we'll see you in the next one. All of our Computex 2019 videos are edited on Acer laptops, namely the brand new Acer Nitro 5 and Predator Triton 500, powered by the brand new 9th generation Intel i5 and i7 processors.